Hello and welcome. In my last video I repaired this Voodoo 3 card where memory chips broke one after another due to defective bus switch. I had to guess which memory chips were broken and exchange those relying on my gut feeling. Which is obviously a ridiculous strategy, so I decided to approach the problem more seriously and find a way to determine the broken chips in a reliable way. After some investigation I came to a useful result and have shown it briefly in my last video. The proof of concept solution revealed to me which chip on the card was broken and a successful replacement confirmed that the prediction was right. So I started to dig deeper and to make a tool which could help with such repairs. And in this video I would like to introduce that tool and talk a little bit about its technical background. First of all, how can we test any memory, not only the video memory? Well, we can write various patterns into it, then try to read those back and validate that what we read is the same value as what we wrote. If the results differ, we know that the memory is broken. Well, of course, considering that the rest of the system is alright. This is basically how all the memory tests work like the memtest86 plus for main memory or the video memory stress test tool which I showed in my last video. As I said, it writes patterns and prints the addresses in the memory at which the patterns turned out to be corrupt after the write read cycle. And those addresses are exactly what we want. But we need to know how to derive from those which memory chip is affected, so we know which one to replace. To understand how to do that, we have to take a look at the organization of the memory on a graphics card. Most enthusiasts know that graphics cards have different memory bus width. Uh, some cards have 64 bits, some have 128 bits memory bus. More modern and expensive high-end cards can have 256 or even up to 512 bits bus. We usually talk about that from perspective of performance. But what does that mean? In a nutshell, this means how much data a graphics chip is able to write into or read from the video memory in one shot. If you have, from today's point of view, a cheap 64-bit graphics card, that means that it can write or read 8 bytes of data in one go. If you would have the same card with 256-bit memory interface, it could read or write 32 bytes in the same time. In which way is it interesting for the topic today? Well, let's take a look at this Voodoo 3 again. This card has a 128-bit memory bus. Now, if you look at the datasheet of the memory chips, which are used here, you will see that each chip has only 16-bit data interface. You can imagine such a memory chip like an array of cells of 16 bits, or 2 bytes each. Every cell has a unique address and the total capacity of the chip is basically the amount of addresses multiplied by the amount of cells. Now, what if the card has 128-bit memory interface? Well, you have to store data in cells spread over multiple chips. First 16 bits in the first chip, second 16 bits in the second chip, third 16 bits in the third chip, and so on. Of course, all at the same address per chip, so if the graphics chip tries to read 128-bit from address 32, it can set up the address once for all the chips and then fetch the complete 128 bits from all the chips in one go. Then if we read an array of bits from an address and compare it with the data with written at that address previously, we can determine which bits exactly are broken. And since we know which bits are stored in which chip, we can tell which chip must be faulty. So far the theory. To check this I locked the output of the video memory stress test tool for the Voodoo 3 card and wrote a small parser which would take the faulty addresses and calculate the memory chips as previously explained. I also removed the chips and shorted some pins to see how the output changes and if it corresponds to my expectations. The result was quite promising and based on that as you probably remember, I was able to tell exactly which chip was defective on this card. Although the video memory stress test is a great tool, it needs a lot of time for the full test iteration, especially when there are a lot of faulty addresses. 
Also having my rudimentary parser on top of it didn't make me happy. It was a good enough solution for my experiments, but it was not sufficient for anything else. So I decided to use the knowledge to implement a new tool which would test the memory and tell which chip is broken in one go. There was one bullet point on my to-do list for a very long time anyway, and so I decided to combine these two things in one. I wanted to try to make a project in modern C++20, including STL exceptions and all the fancy stuff which is frowned upon on retro systems. So, equipped with a modern C++ compiler, Docker, GitHub and other fancy words, I started to develop software for a 386. And I'm glad to introduce to you the NecroWare's Video Memory Tester. Not a very fancy name, but I was not creative enough to find something. The working name was STOG, which stands for Stop Guessing, but I found that weird for a final name. I don't want to go into programming details here, since this is probably not very interesting for everyone, but I'm glad to say that I could stick to C++20 almost completely and it works great. I just excluded the usage of I.O. streams from STL, not because it didn't work, it did, but because it made the binary three times as huge and I wanted to try to keep it fast and small. The tool runs in DOS. The current state is still a very early version. I would even say still more of a proof of concept than a final version, but it is already working. It is not limited to 3DFX Voodoo 3 cards and can be used to test other cards as well. But currently it requires Visa BIOS extension too and is limited only to cards which support that. However, that is supported by probably all AGP cards and most of the later PCI cards too. Maybe in the future I will extend the support to all the cards as well, but at this point the focus is on the cards of the late 90s. Or later. I also didn't try yet PCI Express cards, but that is also on my to-do list. The tool is very simple and requires two command line arguments, memory bus width in bits and the total number of video memory chips. I already started to work on automatic memory interface detection, but that is graphics card specific and is not standardized, so I will have to implement lookup tables for all kinds of chips and models. That will take a while and so far the memory bus width has to be supplied manually. It is also not possible to detect how many chips there are on the card. This information is not obtainable and has to be defined manually. And take a look at these two cards for example. Both are GeForce 2 MX cards and both have a 128-bit memory bus. But one card has only four chips where the other one has eight. This is because the memory chips on this card are 32 bits and here they are 16 bits. So you need twice as many chips. Uh, if you look closely you will see that the 32 bit ch memory chips have higher pin density than the 16 bit chips. Well, from the software point of view these two cards look identical. There is no way how it could tell how many memory chips there are. That's why the number of chips has to be provided as a command line argument. When the tool finished the run, it gives the list of chips starting with number 0 and its condition. If the chip is bad, you should know which one to replace. And here we have the next problem. The tool just says the number of the chip, which is faulty, but how do you know which is which? On this 3DFX Voodoo 3, there are 8 chips. Which one is chip 0? 5 or 7? Is this 0 or is this 0? Well, luckily it looks like the manufacturer usually named the chips in the same order as they are bound to the memory bus. Near each chip you see here the inscription U6, U7, U8, U10, U11, U12, U13 and U14. The numbers are not sequential, but they are rising. As I said, I tested a couple of cards and it seems to be a common practice to name the memory chips in order on the graphics card. On this Voodoo 3, for example, this chip is 0, this is 1, this is 2 and so on until 7. In the last video I showed how the tool detected the fifth chip to be faulty. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
this was the one which I replaced and that was right. Another card where I tested the tool was this ATI Rage 128 Pro. This card looked almost alright. In DOS there were no visible errors at all and in Windows you could see some faint stripes. In the games and benchmarks there were very subtle glitches. And the video memory stress tool reported video memory errors. So I used my tool and it told me that the defective chip was number one. Unlike on the 3DFX Voodoo 3 previously, the numbering on this card goes from right to left, U9, U10, U11 and U12. So I considered U9 to be chip 0 and so U10 should be chip 1. I bought some new chips which costed me probably 5 times of what such a card would cost on eBay today, but that was for the science. And replaced the second chip as proposed by the tool. And voila, all the errors have gone. The calculation of the tool was once again right. On the 3DFX Voodoo 3 that could have been a fluke. But having two cards with different number of chips repaired is a strong sign that the tool works as expected. By the way, soldering 32-bit memory chips was quite challenging. You absolutely need a microscope to do that. But in the end I was rewarded by a working card. Of course, I didn't only check the card with my tool, I also double checked it with the video memory stress test. And that one didn't report any errors too. So I bought more cards online, dug some exemplars from donations and started to test which cards have broken memory. For example, on this ATI Radeon 8500 there seem to be two broken chips, one and five, which is probably this one and this one. This ATI Radio 9100, which is basically the same card as the previous 8500, just with slightly lower clock, is reported to have one broken memory chip, 7, which is probably this one. I didn't try to repair these two cards yet, because it is very hard to find replacement memory for those. The memory on both cards needs to be of very low timing to be able to run at those clocks and you can't buy it anymore. I have to sacrifice one of these cards to play a donor for the other one, but I didn't decide which one yet. Um, I would like to rescue the 8500, also because it would be interesting to fix a card which uh, has two broken chips, but the timings on the memory of this card is even higher than the one on the 9100, so probably it will be the 8500 which I will have to sacrifice. This is also an interesting example, NVIDIA Revo TNT 2M64. The card itself is not too exciting, but the results of this test are interesting. First of all, the card is detected, but the image is completely messed up. You can't see anything. So I modified the autoexec part in such a way that it starts my video memory test tool automatically and redirects the output into a file which I could view on a working card again. And as you see, the tool reported that all chips are dead. That is very unlikely that all chips got faulty. Either my tool doesn't work properly with this card, or the interface between the GPU and the memory is faulty. I assume it's the second, but I'll put this card on the to-do list for closer inspection later. As you see, I was busy programming, buying and testing. And as you imagine, it would be quite annoying if the tests would take very long. Video memory stress tests is a great tool, as I said, reliable, nicely done, with visual presentation, but one test iteration on this 3DFX Voodoo 3 took more than an hour. On the ATI Radeon 8500, with two broken chips, it ran for five hours. And that was something I wanted to address with my tool. And I think I was quite successful with that. Of course, I have no UI and almost no presentation at all, but on the other hand, my test tool probably doesn't really need that, since the test of a 3DFX Voodoo 3 with 16 megabytes takes less than 10 seconds, and the 128 megabytes ATI Radeon 8500 is tested in only 30 seconds. That is quite a cut down from 5 hours. In the future, I plan to do some UI, 
but I will probably not add anything what would impact the runtime. I think this could be the problem with the video memory stress test, which prints every single broken address in the UI and that is very, very slow. As mentioned previously, I would definitely add memory bus with detection and also memory type and other information about the graphics cards. I think it would be nice to have uh, such a graphics card identification utility in DOS. But those are plans for the future and now you can download the early version from the releases area of the project. The EXA is pre-compiled for DOS and needs at least Pentium class CPU. You would also need a DPMI manager, which you can download from the internet, but I also included a copy on the project site. Just put both executables into the same directory and run nwvmt-help for further instructions. The documentation on the project site is also very rudimentary yet and will be extended in the future. And this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and would be glad to know what you think about this tool. Feel free to give it a try and maybe it will help you to resurrect the one or another graphics card from the dead. Also keep an eye open for the updates. Thank you for watching and goodbye.